Hey, it's Junkman from VintageRock.com, and uh, we were at NAMM 2018, as you can imagine. And here, it's really cool, we're at the P, uh, the Paul Reed Smith uh, guitar booth. And actually, we're in a little private area of Paul Reed Smith guitar booth. And I've got Brian from uh, Paul Reed Smith, who's going to tell us about some really, really cool new products. So how are you doing? Doing great. Good. Good. Welcome to, welcome to uh, VintageRock.com. Um, again, very excited about uh, seeing all the new Paul Reed Smith products. You've got a couple in particular that you want to talk about. Yeah, so there's a lot for 2018. A couple guitars we'll, we'll play through in a second, uh, but big news is the, the Tremonti amp. You want to hold on to that? Yeah, sure. So the uh, Tremonti amp, 15 watt, MT15, you got a Mark Tremonti 15 watt, two 6L6s, but running down at 15 watts, and there's even actually a half power switch. Um, I don't even feel the half power switch is needed to bring the volume down. It does drop it down a little bit, change the way it feels. Uh, it can play at a whisper bedroom volume in full power and, and sing. And fitted one too. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, it's a great little lunchbox size. Um, but the half power switch gives it a little bit more of like a vintage sag, it's a different feel. So if you want that kind of more classic rock kind of thing, it does it great. It actually does low gain great. It's obviously a high gain, um, you know, the platform I was designed as a high gain beast, but so it kills at that. But the low gain sound is incredible. The clean sound is gorgeous. So, super versatile amp. Incredible price point. It's it's it streets for just under uh, 650 uh, US. So for you know, all tube PRS amp. That's pretty uh, pretty remarkable. And it would it would definitely look good underneath the Christmas tree. A nice little box around oh, it. Oh, yeah, exactly. Clean channel to lead channel. Oh, hey, yeah, there you go. Yeah, that, that's one of my favorite little aspects, you know. I'll be changing channels all the time just to see the lights go. You yeah, know? exactly. So let's plug in and listen to it, okay? Sure, absolutely. Now you're going to be plugging which uh, which model guitar are we plugging in here? So this this is the uh, S2 Studio, okay? So he's had studio model guitars over the years, and they've they've all been a little different. But one thing they always have in common, it's, they're almost always a three pickup guitar. Um, and the idea for him, a studio guitar should be, you know, an all-in-one, something you could bring right. and cover as much ground as possible. Right? Very versatile. Yeah. So, you know, where, you know, you would, even though these are pretty large looking pickups, these are single coils. So it's a hum single single, and the hum is, is splittable. So you can do a single single single, or you know five-way blade switch which you would kind of expect with a three pickup guitar but a little uh, twist on it is in the center position instead of just being your middle pickup you're actually getting the outside too which is a really cool yeah. sound combination so you can get some really great like spanky country sounds and a lot of sounds a lot of familiar sounds in there but also it's really got a, a voice of its own so I'll start on the clean channel so we can really hear the, the voice of the guitar um, take it off standby The clean channel on this has a lot of headroom, so it can actually work great as a pedal platform. Um, uh, it stays, the you can crank the volume all the way up, stays clean all the way if you want to keep that like pristine clean thing. But if you want that light breakup, there is a push pull on the, on the treble knob on the clean channel. So this is with it pushed down. And when you pull it out, it not only, it's not a bright boost, it actually is a full gain boost. And so. So, especially a guitar like this with lower output pickup single coils, it just comes to life. It's got a lot of punch. Yeah, yeah. So, beautiful clean channel. Heading over to lead channel where the really magic happens on this thing. I'm gonna start with the gain way down and the volume way down, right? So even like at a bedroom volume, right? I could get this thing. I mean, it sings like the amp is cranked up, but I mean, it's barely on right now, right? So bringing it up just a little bit, well, that's a lot. So even dense chords, even with all that gain, dense chords, all the notes ring out. Um, the, I'll crank up the gain a little bit more and even show you like if I roll back the volume, you know. That's with tons of gain on it. But it still just cleans up beautifully. It was gorgeous sounding. I mean, it's super nice. versatile um, for 650 bucks. You know, it's um, it's a no-brainer to me. I'm I'm actually I'm gonna get one. Don't need it. I have a lot of amps, but I still want one. <laughs> the more I play through it. 
There's an optional matching cabinet. It's got a vintage 30 in it. Uh, Mark actually was telling me yesterday, because um, I was looking at the spec sheet, there is a PRS cabinet that's not the Mark Tremonti version. Uh, even though it doesn't say Mark's name anywhere on it, this is the, the matching one for the amp. And the difference is the speaker, he, he's a vintage 30 guy, so uh, that's what they voice the amp around. So this has a vintage 30 in it. It has a little black piping around here that the other one doesn't do, just a tiny detail. But the other thing is that the grill cloth is different, and it's listed different on, on the spec sheet, but they're both black. So you look at them side by side, and you're like, hmm, that's, I didn't know why he chose a different grill cloth. He actually said it's a, a, a sound thing. Mm -hmm. So this is a nylon grill cloth. And one time he was playing through two different cabinets that were identical, same speaker, everything, and they sounded different, and he liked one better than the other. Right. One had this nylon grill cloth, and, the other, the grill cloth. and the other was black basket weave. I mean, all the sound goes through it. It's a filter, right? right. So it diffuses the high end differently. Um, so that's the he has the same level of detail about the little minutia about what it sounds like that Paul does. So the two of them have been geeking <laughs> out together, designing this over, and, and Doug Sewell, too, who's you know the right. principal amp designer there. So I think they knocked it out of the park. It's, it looks great. Price point is right. It sounds Sounds great. Yeah. They're bulletproof. I mean, I, we're you know they do a lot of road testing on these and beat them up to make sure they're not going to fail. Um, so yeah, that's the S2 Studio. Uh, this is a limited run, so it's only going to be available for a short while. So you know, grab one of these quick if, if you're interested. Is there a uh, is there a retail price map on that? The map on this is uh, 13.99, I believe. Um, I'm not uh, sales, so right. I think that's what I heard. But you know, obviously that information is widely available. So don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure that's it. Promise. So this is another uh, another new offering that's uh, also uh, limited run. This is the Dusty Waring model. It's a CE24 Floyd. So the CE is the bolt-on model uh, with, with the addition of the Floyd. Uh, it's the first time it's been put on a CE. Dusty also gets the uh, distinction of having the first ever signature model in the CE line. There's been SE import signature models. There's core and private stock but never before has there been one uh, in the CE line. He chose the platform of the CE because he wanted a US built carved top, mm -hmm. uh, which the S2s are all flat top with bevels. So this is the entry level to a carved top US guitar. He wanted to keep the price point down instead of coming out with a, you know, a three to $4,000 signature model. He wanted to keep it down in the twos, you know, but the substantial price difference. So the CE platform is what he chose. Uh, so it's a bolt on maple neck. Uh, he actually went with a maple fingerboard, which is not what you would get on a CE. The Floyd Rose, you can't get on a CE. It's satin finish, which is a really cool option. He also did the layout of the volume knobs a little different, so they, he has more room. Uh, so normally the volume knob is up here, so using the, the trim, it's out of the way. And then where a CE normally has a three-way toggle and a push-pull to do, do the coil splits, he w opted for a five-way blade switch with a traditional PRS switching like a, what you would find on a custom. Right. And then his signature pickups made by Mojo Tone, uh, great like super, you know, high gain beast, but they still, still nice and clear when you roll them back. You know, um, they're great sounding pickups. Like if you, you don't want super beefy, punchy, they, they, they just sound incredible. They split really well. Uh, they actually match this amp like beautifully. Now, in terms of the contour too, is that a custom contouring or is that a standard contouring that you guys do? Do you have they have like different contours for different artists or? Uh, it is different than a, than like a traditional PRS core, uh, not because for Dusty, but like the CE is a different. It's okay. a slightly shallower carve. Mm -hmm. So where the carve on a regular uh, PRS core model is a little more dramatic and the lip comes up a little bit. It's, a, right. it's slightly taller, there's divots under here. Um, that is actually the part of the price difference of a CE. The, the time it takes, there's 20, around 20 to 22 hours of right. hands-on skilled labor in building a core instrument. And a lot of that is the, the, the carves and the dips in the valleys at the top take so much time. It's a sculpting project. Right. So they wanted to be able to get the build time down uh, without sacrificing quality, but just man hours. So um, making a more subtle carve um, on that. And that's the same principle with the, what they do. Exactly what I was looking yeah. for. <laughs> yeah, so so this isn't a subtle carve because it's the Dusty's choice. That's just what's on the CE. Right. Yeah. And uh, he did, one thing he did change is he went with the, uh, the, 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 wide fat neck or the I'm sorry the wide thin neck the pattern thin uh, but he actually had it shaved down just a little bit more so it's a slightly slightly thinner than the traditional pattern thin necks so interesting that's. interesting inlays as well too yeah yeah they've done that before with the silhouette birds uh, but it really pops on yeah. the uh, on the maple, the maple. Yeah, yeah it's really cool 
Yeah, it's, a, it's and I love the satin finish. And if you notice, like on the back, um, they don't put grain filler, so the the satin um, sinks right into the into the mahogany. It doesn't sink in the same way on the maple, but it feels so great. It feels nice and smooth. You know, I live in Maryland, so it's like humidity is out of control sometimes so a satin finish neck is great it doesn't get all sticky right. um, but this is the satin finish on, on all these PRS is a, is a really thin nitro so it's you know a super thin pass enough to protect the wood from moisture and protect it but the guitars ring really clear because there's just no very little finish on it to choke it so Paul Reed Smith man you know I say no yeah, more yeah exactly <laughs> and they do it right you know? yeah so these these are all new for 2018 great well I appreciate you uh, letting us in on a little of these things and you can find everything at uh, paulreedsmith.com or you know where fine Paul Reed Smith guitars are sold or you know yeah. <laughs> you know where to go but uh, yeah a lot of uh a lot of really cool products you got, so I appreciate you talking with us here at VintageRock.com. My so, pleasure. Again, Chuck Mann from VintageRock.com and uh, NAM 2018 at uh, Paul Reed Smith.